So if you like books on tape with a twist, stick around. Subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. So let's get right into it. Chapter 19. On the flight over the Atlantic, William could have sworn it was love at first sight. Yes, Greta told him. I am going away from boyfriend now. William guessed that she'd recently broke up with somebody. I hear you, me too, he said, smiling brightly. I was dating this girl earlier in the summer. It didn't work out. When was the last time you have seen this woman? Well, it's been like six weeks, I guess. Greta seemed happy with his response. She said, have you missed her? William waited about half a second to say, yeah, it's been a little rough. She found someone else. The Dutch girl was touched. She reached over and rubbed William's arms. Two flights and 15 hours later, they landed at Schiphol International in Amsterdam. William said, I guess this is it then. Greta took his hand, leaned over and gave him a tender kiss. I hope that you find your brooder, she said. Perhaps after you come to visit me. She blushed as she handed him a piece of paper inscribed with her address and phone number. William read the note. Nine wagon. Where the hell was that? He wondered. To the Dutch girl then he said, Yeah, that's cool. Maybe we can hook up before I leave. Have you someone waiting for you at Schiphol? Schiphol? Yeah, the Dutch girl said, pausing to think. A second later, she said, I believe it means ship hole in English. It is the airport from Amsterdam. It was at one time, how you say, Hafen? Yes, I have it, Harbor. Okay, I understand, said William. The captain came on the loudspeaker and informed them in English that the weather was overcast and rainy with temperatures in the teens. A stewardess came on and translated in Dutch. As William listened to the foreign words, his mind meandered, gravitating toward the journey ahead. In the process of dislodging his duffel bag out of the overhead compartment, the native Mississippian honed in on the Dutch words around him. Many of the passengers appeared to be returning from vacations were now home. The movements of their facial features, the way their mouths stretch, how their lips pucker, the flicks of the cheek muscles, the guttural G's and trilled R's were all new to him. A beautiful language, William thought, kind of like singing. A couple and their two boys fidgeted about while looking for something that one of them had lost. The clan jabbered to each other in Dutch, whilst the mother gave them all a tongue lash. William tried to avoid the situation by moving around the bickering family. He found no safe passage. The woman, in frustration, turned to him and said, It spied me. The kinderen zijn echt slecht. And then she said something else to the boys, an obvious reprimand of some sort, like, wait until we get home. You two are going to get it. Sorry, I don't speak Dutch, William said. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. My children are very bad. It's no problem, he told the lady with a round face and a Dutch bob. William left the plane, said goodbye to Greta, and watched her follow the other Dutch passengers, wondering the whole time where the hell Nine Wagon was. Are you coming to Europe on business or pleasure, Mr. Dempsey? The customs agent asked him acutely when it was his turn in the line. I'm going to be traveling on the interrail, was William's memorized reply. I'm meeting up with some friends in Amsterdam. We're supposed to travel around the countries. The official looked at him benignly, stamped his passport and said, have a nice trip. William retrieved his identification and said to himself, damn, that was easy. To the procession of passengers, the young American clung. 
William figured that everyone was headed to baggage claim. Along the way, he spotted more Dutch people, most of which had pronounced cheeks and rosy complexions. As far as he could tell, the Dutch seemed to be taller than Americans. Yes, he was on Dutch soil now. Hannah Fondenberg rose early the day of William's arrival. She sat on the ottoman next to the window overlooking Neustrat, sipping a cup of coffee. Her father was in the kitchen cleaning up the mess that he had made during breakfast and sneaking bites of food when she wasn't looking. Outside, she could see a stark wind blowing leaves down the brick road like feathers on a silk blanket. A leaden sky draped the day. Pa, I'm going upstairs to take a bath. No, no, not too long, okay? We'll need to leave soon. Upstairs, the redhead drew a bath of triage, a shampoo by Joico containing evening primrose oil, a gamma linolenic acid that could be metabolized by the body. She loved the way it made her skin feel soft and silky. Hannah, relax now, put her mind in a different place. Pictured herself in an exotic cove on a tropical island full of dark-skinned natives wearing leaf-woven thongs. The men were celebrating, showering the women with gifts, flowers, and wine. It was an orgy, fire burning, and people dancing around a blaze. For an instant, she thought she saw Hunt shimmering in the flames, waving to her. Hannah's father knocked on the door, snapping her back to reality. Scotcha, he said. We need to g g get going. Yeah, Pa, I'll be out in a minute. She heard her father stumbling down the hall, his heavy feet stomping the wooden floor. The shock from his steps sent a wave through the flat. Hannah knew that her father was growing impatient. She needed to hurry. When she entered the dining room, her father said demurely, Ready to go? Do I really have to stay on the farm, Pa? Uh, at least until we f f figure out what's going on. B b besides, I told you, you need to get to know the lad. Maybe he'll c c clue you in on something. Okay, but just for a few days, Pa. In Amsterdam? William pulled out his itinerary. Yeah, he said to the ticket lady, I'm not sure how you say it, but I need a ticket to Flishingen. I hope you guys enjoyed the story tonight. That was about halfway through chapter 19, and we'll pick up and finish the last part on the next video.